Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to an exciting episode uh, this morning, which also helped through the holidays, and, and actually at any time. So my name is Dr. Kimberly Quinn, and it is my pleasure to be here with you on this glorious day in northern Vermont with the snow sparkling away to talk about, you know, so I have a conversation about um, letting others be right. And it sounds so easy, but it's just so hard. And we can ask ourselves, you know, why do we enjoy being right so much? What is it about being right that just gives us some kind of fix or like, you know, inner thrill? Because we get all pumped when we're right. And it also comes down to, do I, do I really have a, this want or need to be right? Or do I want to experience inner peace? So of course, why it feels so good is because it's all about the ego getting, you know, a big fix. The ego is getting a big fix when we're right. Cause it's a way for us to, the ego likes to elevate. And even though, um, it doesn't mean, you know, it doesn't mean that we're being evil demons, right? It, it just, it can be that the ego is a little out of whack and it's getting some kind of, uh, you know, fulfillment from elevating over somebody we may even really love and care about. And so, um, it, it's also important to realize that when we, ha when we put so much work into being right in a conversation, like called conversational editing, I need to throw a shout out to Richard Carlson for that. Cause, uh, I borrowed that phrase from him and don't sweat the small stuff. So we edit conversationally. That takes an enormous amount of mental energy, so much mental energy. And it can also cause, you know, agita. Agita is an Italian word that just stems from, you know, agitate. When we get that, you know, just yucky feeling in our tummies, or it can just cause agita um, or not so much. Because we can, we can also, uh, again, do this with people we adore. And what else we want to say about this? I guess we have it in our heads sometimes that somehow it's our job, at least in that moment, in that conversation, that it's our job to educate someone, you know, or to, you know, prove to them somehow that our point of view is the right one. It can be about, you know, current events or, you know, politics, or it can even be within our own field, right? So whatever your own thing is, like, for me, it's psychology, right? Positive psychology, teaching about Minecraft, teaching about well-being. And still, in a, in, a, in a conversation out there in the world, it isn't my job in any way, shape, or form to educate anybody on positive psychology or well-being. It's my job to educate my Minecrafters at Champlain, but that's really it. Or, and or, and when I'm you know, a requested to do some sort of thing like a workshop or a, be on a panel for something or a podcast, because that's kind of what I'm signing up for. But out in the world, it's not my job to educate anybody. And if you've ever been on the other side of it, which I'm sure we all have, and people are, you know, educating us, it doesn't feel good. You know, it doesn't, we can, you know, it's the opposite of, you know, that they're doing the elevating. Well, if they're elevating, that has us feeling underneath. Like, what is it? What is it that I'm doing or saying or thinking that has the has this person in this conversation feeling the need to, you know, tell me like it is, right? To educate me on whatever it is, and it's it can feel demeaning, and I don't know. It just doesn't doesn't feel good. So when we can sort of realize this is the ego talking, because the authentic self, of course has no need to be right. The authentic, the authentic self can know that she or he or they are right. And they just don't have to prove anything. They have nothing to prove because when we're walking around in our authenticity, residing in our authentic self and living in our truth, it's enough that we just know we're right. We don't need to prove it to anybody. We don't, we're not getting that urge to react and respond we, because we just sort of know it ourselves. So, so letting others be right in an everyday conversation takes practice, right? Because it's, we do get some kind of fix off not doing so, even though it's, it's not the healthiest and doesn't go anywhere good. So of course, practicing, whatever we practice, we inevitably get good at, you know, whether it's playing the violin, playing soccer, learning Swahili, you know, anything we eventually get, get good at. And then it also takes less effort. So, um, 
rather than get into a battle of the egos, which also has, especially if we're having a conversation with people we actually love and adore, because we can do this on autopilot a lot, you know, that has people being getting defensive, even if they don't tell you, you know, and, and, and so when we, we sort of cease to enter into a battle of the egos, then those in the conversation, friends, family will become less defensive and, you know, more loving and kind. And it's just a, just a all around better way to go. So this is a short one today because especially during the holidays, I mean, I think this conversation is a good one to have, you know, really at any time of year though, especially during the holidays when people are thrown together, um, who wouldn't maybe normally spend time together. You know, a lot of that can be good, but a lot of that can be tense and stressful because, you know, that cousin three times removed, you don't see except once a year and they're going to start with their opinions and their politics and, you know, their advice about what to do about the Rona of axes and boosters. And it's just blah, 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 blah. So if we go into it, if we go into the holidays with this, you know, dropping the rope, put the shield down kind of thing, you're, you're going to have a much, much better time, a much better use of your life minutes because you'll have inner peace just kind of sitting back and taking it all in and just and also just choosing not to let anything offend you. Just sit back. Okay, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful northern Vermont. Have a mindful day. Uh-huh.